Hello, coffee lovers. Welcome to Tron Cafe. This is part two of our series to mod the Gaja Classic Pro Espresso Machine. In this video, we will look in detail the mod process for installing the pressure gauge and the flow controller. We will also test the pressure gauge readings, check for leakages, and calibrate the flow controller. We will start with the pressure gauge kit first because the components to be modified are deeper inside the machine as compared to the PID kit. The pressure gauge comes with a brass adapter at the end of its tubing. I'm laying out all the components for the rest of the kit. The first one is the manifold, the brass piece, the brass rectangular piece. It comes with two O-rings and then there are two spare O-rings, three tubing adapters, one is a spare, and two long screws. These are to replace the shorter original ones. First, we screw in the adapter into the brass piece from the pressure gauge. To make sure it's tight, I'm going to use a spanner. Here I use the an adjustable spanner with my right hand and my right finger well you should use a plier instead of just using a finger like I do here. The idea is to make sure this is really tightly fixed because it needs to be watertight for accurate pressure reading and of course to avoid leakage. Make sure to watch till the end of this video to find out what is wrong with this assembly. Connect up the other adapter, just push it in. The other end of the tubing goes into the adapter for the pressure gauge. This is how the assembled gauge should look like. Next, we remove the original manifold, which is sitting at the base of the boiler. The manifold is held by two screws which we will use the M4 Allen key to unscrew. The new manifold extension from the kit will sit between the boiler and this current manifold. Then you get an idea how difficult it is to remove these screws. They are deep in the machine and they will screw on real tight. As you will see later on, this is one of the more difficult parts of the modification process, mainly because of the concern about leakage. So we have finally removed the original manifold. This is how it looks like. And on the manifold, you will find two holes which were used to screw on to the boiler. And you will also find the two red O-rings in it. 
make sure not to lose them. Next, for the new manifold extension, press in the two O-rings and screw in the tubing adapter real tight. These are the original screws from the machine and which will be replaced by these longer ones. Before we install the manifold extension, make sure the O-rings are seated correctly. Change the original O-rings with new ones from the kit if you have to. I much prefer the O-rings to protrude from the surface more, but it is what it is. Now place the new manifold extension onto the original one and align them with the two longer screws. Now place the sandwich assembly onto the boiler and screw in real tight. The tubing adapter on the manifold extension should be facing the top, of course. This is how the manifold extension should look like after assembly. Now we push in the tubing to the manifold extension to connect up the pressure gauge. That's how it should look like after assembly. If you need to remove the tubing, just press in the release ring around the adapter. To install the flow controller, we first need to remove the two connectors. Use a flat driver to push or pry them out.
Next, we connect the flow controller output cables, the orange cables, to the pump. and the flow controller's input cables, the white ones, to the pump's original power supply cables. Not to worry about the polarity for these cables, because this is an AC pump. Next step, reconnect the power supply lines inside the unit. This is just a reverse of our earlier process, just make sure to get the cable's color coding right. Now we are ready to power on the unit, but before that, make sure to take the safety precautions. Do not power on the unit just yet. I'm going to use a other filter with the first test we will perform will be a low pressure leak test. So the blind filter will not be necessary for now. We will put that aside. Get yourself ready with a piece of towel, just in case of leaks and a piece of paper tissue for checking of leaks within the unit. Before turning on the machine, Manage the loose cables around the unit, insulate them if necessary. Make sure that the valve to the steam vent is fully closed because we do not want the steam to blow into the machine during power up. Also, turn the port meter of the flow controller to the minimum, that is fully anti-clockwise, so that the machine starts the brew function with very low pressure during the test. Now power on the unit. Make sure nothing is leaking for now. And turn on the brew and slowly crank up the pump. Oops. We just saw water leaking from the top, gushing up from the top of the adapter. Let's open up and see what's going on. The two adapters are screwed onto each other real tight, but as an assembly is still really loose from the tubing. I, that is the cause of the leak. So, you know, this the the leak is not be from between the two adapters. After some simple troubleshooting, we found that an O-ring is needed in the pressure gauge adapter. Fortunately, the spare O-ring from the kit fit in nicely. 
With a low pressure test done and the leak problem solved, we now proceed with the high pressure test. In this test, we will use the flying potter filter to allow for the high pressure. The boiler is not yet screwed down, so we need to be careful when we put on the potter filter. Now turn on the machine, turn on the brew, and take note of the pressure gauge readings. It's going up and up now. Okay, we retest it again. It's at about 12 bar now. And we turn it off again. So at this point, we will check if there are any leaks within the machine. From this point on, I put the machine through several rounds of tests at various pressure levels and check the response of the flow controller versus the pressure gauge reading. All this while, I will check for leaks with a paper towel and bare fingers. In the next step, unplug the machine from the wall. Practice safety precautions. Whenever you have to access the inside of the machine, just make sure the power cable is unplugged. I'm rechecking for leaks and retightening the adapters to reduce the chances of leaks in future. You'll notice that I've changed the adapter from the stainless steel to the brass type for the pressure gauge as I think it will work better. At long last, after repeated testing, I am very sure that there will be no leaks at high pressure. So this machine is suitable for brewing and steaming. Now we proceed to the last part of this video. We will calibrate the flow controller to provide the desired response between the port meter and the pump pressure. We will use the knob provided in the kit for ease of use during the test. In the next step, unplug the machine from the wall. Practice safety precautions. To fine tune the pump response to the flow controller knob rotation, adjust the port meter on the flow controller board. Turn the port meter on board clockwise by a maximum of one turn if you want to start the pump sooner and vice versa. From this point on, we need several rounds of fine-tuning the onboard port meter till we are satisfied with the response of the flow controller and pump pressure.
Now after calibration, the final characteristics of the machine is that the pump will start at about 1 o'clock and reaches 9 bar at around 7 o'clock. For me, that is a good range for the port meter, so I'm satisfied with it.